They straight up nerfed Inteleon. This thing used to be able to use focus energy to get guaranteed crits, and it no longer gets that. But with its base 125 special attack and 120 speed, our skinny lizard friend does still have some use. Its ability Sniper increases crit damage by 50%, and this pairs super nicely with its signature move Snipe Shot, which is an 80 power water move with a high crit chance. We toss on the Scope Lens held item, which raises the likelihood of getting a critical hit by an extra one stage, and Snipe Shot can now crit about half the time. It did get some help with now having access to Flip Turn to grab Pivot Momentum, and coverage with Ice Beam and support with Speedy Taunts is pretty nice. Inteleon's definitely not what it used to be, but I'm telling you, this thing can still be a monster. Alright, look, a move called Snipe Shot should get a crit 100% of the time, but Game Freak hates our little skinny lizard here, and this thing has not gotten a lot of love lately, but that is what I'm here for, and if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I'd love for you to be part of the journey, and we have a super good match for you today, let's go ahead and jump into it. So to start things off, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the low kicks. Who knows if it's actually low kicks, because they do have the Hisuian Zorark on their end. However, I kind of expected something like a Ting Lu lead, and the name is Pond. James Pond. Now, of course, I lead off with this thing just to try to snipe the Ting Lu, and that's not going to happen because I do not really want to try to take a first impression from the low kick. So I decided to switch into the Arcanine here. Now, this is going to be a Flash Fighter Arcanine. Kind of been messing around a little bit with different Arcanine sets, but they're actually just going to end up switching this thing out, and they make actually a really good double switch. They're going to end up going into the Pre Marina, expecting me potentially to go into the Arcanine. I do make the correct read, as now Arcanine is kind of forced out here. Now, I do have the Water Absorb Cacturn, and let me tell you, Buddy is feeling parched out here. So, I can decide to go into the Cacturn, which is going to allow me to get a free switch into a Water Move, but instead, they actually go for the Substitute. And, honestly, Pre Marina is still quite scary for this matchup, just because you know, I'm threatened by a Fairy Move. I considered potentially going for a Fairy Terra. Uh, but coming in on the substitute is honestly not ideal, and I kind of need to uh, get this thing out of here. I don't want this thing to set up with combines, but seeing as this thing is a substitute set, that is exactly what it's going to do. So at least them going for the combine here is going to allow me to break the sub with a seed bomb, and then I can kind of create a little bit of a mind game action. So the seed bomb's going to come through, throw some babies at this thing, and uh, down goes the crazy beanbag. So. I'm kind of in a weird spot here. Of course, I cannot live at attack, especially at the plus one here. And obviously, the Sucker Punch is not going to help me out a whole lot. I don't care how badass I look in my cool pointed hat. I have no business here with this Pre Marina. So, I do have one solid check to this, and that is going to be the crazy ass ugly seahorse. I'm, I'm going to go into the Drag Algae just because I am both specially defensive and I have the Assault Vest. So, I should be able to take whatever fairy move they want to throw at me. Probably going to be like the alluring voice here, but immediately as the drag algae comes in, I get smooched right on the mouth. And uh, without consent, just switching right in to the draining kiss is honestly fine, because it doesn't actually hurt a whole lot. Assault vest drag algae has no damn business being this specially bulky, and that is amazing. So. They decide to go for the substitute, likely just going to kind of scout what I'm going to go for here. I considered the flip turn, but seeing as they have the special attack and special defense boost, they're not going to waste the combine. So a sludge wave, of course, is still going to be able to break the sub there with a nice little stab. And the, the seahorse is in a pretty solid spot here. I am kind of concerned because, of course, they do still have the, you know, the Terra in the back pocket, and this Primarina is kind of an issue. So, I'm basically just forced to go for another Sludge Wave here, as, yep, they are going to end up going ahead and committing the Terra here. So, while that's kind of nice to see that they're able to use it now, it means it's not going to be something crazy later, I now have to deal with a freaking Primarina with an axe on its head. So, the Terra Steel is a solid play, because, of course, now they can get a free substitute, and I can no longer hit this thing with the Sludge Wave. So, that is kind of scary. Now, the good news is, at least... Drag Algae is in a position where I can definitely you know, take a few more attacks from this thing. I kind of just need to ensure that uh, the Pre Marina is whittled down enough to where you know, I can switch into something faster and get a revenge kill at this point. And that is the goal. So, the only thing I have to hit this is the scariest thing imaginable with a you know, freaking Focus Blast. So, they're going to go for another Calm Mind, bring it up to plus two, and is easy. All I have to do is hit a Focus Blast. I've never missed one of these in my life. I do actually connect on the focus miss, and uh, that's going to be able to break the substitute. So, 
While, you know, I do have the answer in at least getting rid of the subs with the uh, with the Focus Blast here, I basically just have that on this set for the Steel-type switch-ins. And uh, it is going to be able to kind of at least check what this thing wants to do. And at this point, either they go for damage or they go for another sub. I'm, if I'm them, I probably just go for another sub here. However, they are going to end up smooching me once more. Draining Kiss, not able to do a whole lot here. And this is why we love Dragalgy. This thing is just such a... It's able to just stop special attackers in their tracks super nicely. And I actually also hit a second Focus Blast. So I'm literally going to be on my way to grab a freaking Lotto Ticket. And why, even though it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage there, I'm proud of our 2020 vision out here. So here's the thing. I do not really want to roll another Focus Blast. Plus, it's not doing enough. Uh, but what I can do is actually go into Arcanine here. If they want to continually just go for damage, I can actually bring in Arcanine, you know, on a Draining Kiss easily. And then I actually just outspeed. And now that he's Steel-type, I can just uh, bop his ass with the nice little Flare Blitz. So they actually end up going for another Calm Mind here rather than the Substitute, which is actually perfect. Because as the Canine comes in, there's going to be some, some Blitzing to be had. So... Uh, after some leftover recovery, this thing is still looking more healthy than we'd freaking like it. Uh, but at this point, surely I just go for the Flare Blitz. They can potentially switch, but they just stay in, and the Blitz is going to be able to take care of the Prima Arena. So that's a pretty big threat out of the way, and honestly, I didn't really lose a whole lot of resources in dealing with that. And they had to commit the Terra, which is uh, pretty good for me. So... As Arcanine takes a little bit of Flare Blitz chip, they can now decide to Revenge Switch on kind of whatever they like at this point. And uh, Arcanine actually does look pretty solid against a lot of the things other than, you know, considering like Ting Lu. But they actually decide to go into this freaking coffee table looking ass, the <laughs> Avalug. Now, as Avalug comes in here, a lot of the time these do like to go for Terra. Uh, just because defensively it does benefit a lot from you know, type changes. But... As I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know what, I have no reason not to go for a Flare Blitz here. This thing has more physical defense than the Lord himself, but uh, a Flare Blitz does over half, and I'm like, hey, that's actually, I'm pretty okay with that. I do take some Rocky Helmet in the process, along with the chip from the Flare Blitz, but now I see the plan. They're actually just going to go for the Recover, bring it back to full, and this is certainly a battle Arcanine's not going to win with that damn Rocky Helmet over there, so... I don't really want to take more chip than is necessary, and at this point I kind of am forced to switch here. So I actually decide to go into the Cleaver here. Now Cleaver is my only mode of setting up Stealth Rock here, and I would love to both get some super effective damage you know, with the Stone Axe, and also just get the rocks up for later. So uh, they actually end up going for the Body Press, knocks me down to 69 HP and does half. Nice, as uh, at least this does you know, allow me to go for that Stone Axe. And while it's not going to do a whole lot of damage, I'm mostly just concerned about getting my rocks up. As uh, Cleaver, while it does look relatively valuable in this, I kind of just wanted to prioritize you know, getting up those Stealth Rock. To be fair, I kind of expected them to go for just another recover there. But uh, the Body Press comes through, finishes off the Cleaver, and I kind of waste the little fella. But... It was for the greater good, because now my hardest hitting special attacker is able to come in at nice and uh, safely. So, I go into the Inteleon here just because with the special defense this thing has and the like a really high chance for crits, Snipeshot definitely takes this thing out. I do actually end up grabbing the crit and uh, call that a headshot, baby. So, down goes the Avalug. That is a solid defensive switch in there. And now, honestly, Inteleon looks super nice here. So, on the Revenge, they're going to end up bringing in the Latios. I've honestly been pretty afraid of this Latios here, and there's a couple different things that this could be. Now, I'm imagining it's probably just an offensive set here. I consider going for the Taunt. I consider potentially switching. I really don't have a lot that wants to come in on this. So I decide, you know, I can just outspeed, go for an Ice Beam, try to get that Scope Lens to do its thing. And sadly, it's not quite going to be able to take it out here. As... They actually end up going for the Tailwind, so that is extremely scary because now this fucking jet over here is uh, definitely going to be the fastest thing on either side, and I definitely also die to like a Draco Meteor or whatever Luster Purge these things are throwing around these days. So I decide I should definitely save this Inteleon. It looks really nice for the late game, and we are going to get some headshots later, don't you worry. So uh, the problem is I now have to kind of get a little a sack switch in here. I decide to go into the Drag Algae just because it's kind of the least useful mon at this point, as uh, a Luster Purge sends my ass to the Shadow Realm. And uh, that is fine, because now this opens the door for, you know, the Revenge Switch of the Cacturn. Now, Cacturn honestly looks pretty good against, uh, against the Latios. I threaten it with the Sucker Punch, and I imagine they probably see that coming. So I'm actually instead going to go for the Fell Stinger. But it turns out they actually are just going to attack here, and I barely hang on, and the, list, the Fell Stinger 
is able to grab the KO, and I'm like, oh hell yeah, that's gonna give me a plus three attack cack turn, except I end up killing myself with the life orb. So that was annoying. I probably should have just gone for the sucker punch. I figure it's kind of just the obvious play at that point, but in the end, at least we're able to take care of the Latios, which I'm totally fine with. So here's the thing. They're down to three Pokemon left. I've got three Pokemon left. They have the Low Kicks, Hisuian Zorark, along with that Tinglu. So they decide to go into the low kicks here. No idea if this actually is low kicks, but I bring in Arcanine just because that's kind of the switch in that I would have gone for. And I'm hoping it is actually the bug here because now I get a nice little free Will-O-Wisp on whatever wants to come in. Turns out instead, it is gonna hyper voice me. And uh, low kicks does not really do a whole lot of yelling. That tells me it's definitely the Hisuian Zorark as uh, at least the Tailwind is gonna go away. And that's actually amazing because now both Jolteon and the Inteleon are faster than the entire squad here. So I need to try to take advantage of that other than, of course, like first impressions from the actual low kick. So I decided to go into the Jolteon here. Now, here's the thought process. Jolteon, it definitely baits in a, a Ting Lu. I'm like, who doesn't switch into Ting Lu here? I'm going to instead of going for the obvious Thunderbolt, decide to go for the Terra Ice and bop him with a nice little Terra Ice Blast. But... Uh, as I put the snowflake on my dome, it turns out they actually end up staying in here. And as I do outspeed, a Specs Terror Blast is still not a bad kind of middle ground play. Because that actually ends up being able to take out the Zorark. I do get the critical hit. I do not think it mattered, especially because uh, it had a little bit of the Stealth Rock chip. But down goes the Zorark. And while the Ting Lu doesn't come in, at least now I do still threaten that you know, with the Terror Blast. So the best option for them to do is to go into the low kicks here. And... That's exactly what happens. Like freaking deja vu out here, guy is back. And this thing always feels like such a valuable Pokemon in that it always absolutely destroys everything with a first impression. Now, my win condition at this point is gonna be the Inteleon. There's a few things that need to happen in order for that to work, but I have to stay in here. I cannot switch into the Inteleon. And a first impression actually destroys my ass. Now, this time they get the critical hit, which I think also did not matter because as we're gonna see in a second, this is gonna be a life orb. Freaking stab first impression with a tinted lens life orb, it hurts. It hurts real bad. But the good news is, since they used that first impression, they can no longer get the priority and Inteleon is in a pretty solid spot here. So all I have to do is be able to outspeed, going for that snipe shot, and there's bug brains all over the damn battlefield. So low kicks being down is amazing because now the final Pokemon is gonna be the Ting Lu. Now, if you know anything about Ting Lu with his crazy ass bowl on his head, this thing literally, it never dies. Especially if you're planning on hitting it with special attacks because of that Vessel of Ruin, it does drop our special attack. But listen, these are the moments that this Inteleon is exactly built for. With a critical hit chance of literally a coin flip, I can not only ignore the special attack drop, but also thanks to our sniper, we can do probably enough to knock this thing out. So I decide to go for the snipe shot, of course, and it does not get the crit, and it takes it extremely nicely. Now allows it to fire off an earthquake, as uh, at least I'm able to take one of those. So after some leftover recovery, there is one thing that can win me this game, and that is <laughs> with snipe shot doing what Snipeshot does with that scope lens. I have one more chance here to get a crit. I finger blast him, pause, and we do end up getting the critical hit in the most clutch moment of the entire game. And that is gonna be a dead Ting Lu. And uh, if you, listen, you give Inteleon two tries, we're gonna get a crit. And that was very clutch. So that's gonna be the end of the game. This Inteleon, while it doesn't have the ability to focus energy anymore, you can still get some pretty clutch crits. And it's actually, a super fun mon to use. So thank you guys very much for watching. For real, I do appreciate all the support. I've been playing around a little bit with what kind of is more optimal video length. Let me go know what you guys are kind of into and uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace out.